All right, today lesson 3C, finding missing angles. We're really just extending on uh, what we talked about yesterday uh, based on the information that we learned yesterday. And we're continuing to get to the point where yesterday I showed you a picture of some lines crossing or intersecting each other. And in that picture, there were two angles that were given, and there were 20 blank angles. And we're trying to get to that point where we can find all the missing angles inside a picture like that without using a protractor. And so today is the very beginnings of that. Tomorrow we get into the, or Monday actually, we're going to get into the more complicated uh, ideas there. And we will continue, like yesterday, to state the verbal, or verbally, the relationship between angles. So the first part of this lesson is going to be extremely easy. Uh, remember, we've talked about adjacent angles in the last couple of days. We've talked about complementary angles. We have to remember all of those ideas. We've talked about supplementary angles. We have to remember all of those ideas. We've talked about vertical angles. We have to recall and remember what that means. And then now we have pictures. So in this picture, we can see that we have complementary angles. And we talked about that yesterday. So if those angles are complementary, in other words, if they form a right angle, we should be able to easily find the missing angle A. So what is angle A? Tell me, please. 38 degrees. There we go. OK, so the measure of angle A, and then this is where we link up to what we talked about yesterday, and writing missing angles appropriately. This is what I'm expecting the answer to look like. The measure of angle A is equal to 38 degrees. And when we're answering all of these questions today, that's how we need to answer them. Not just writing 38 right here which is what some of you are doing. Let's not just leave it like that. Let's write our answers correctly the way we would in geometry. All right, I would like everybody to try number two, and three, and four, and five, and six. We'll get through all the easy ones here. Number two, we have another picture of complementary angles. Therefore, the measure of angle B should be 67 degrees. 67 and 23 make 90. And then when we get to number three, we now have a linear pair or supplementary angle. Supplementary angles have a sum of 180 degrees. This is called a linear pair because we have two angles that are adjacent sitting next to each other on a line. That's what makes it a linear pair. So therefore, the measure of angle C should be 70 degrees because 180 minus 110 is 70, or but because 110 plus 70 is 180. Number four, same kind of idea, another linear pair there. The measure of angle D should be 40 degrees. And then we have five and six. These are both situations where we have vertical angles. Vertical angles, as we learned yesterday, are congruent to each other. So therefore, the measure of Angle E is 39 degrees, and then in number 6, the measure of angle F is 114 degrees. So that's all very easy. We, we actually talked about those ideas yesterday. So now we start to get to pictures that are slightly more complicated, still not overly complicated. So I would like all of you to go ahead and try number 7. Think about all the things that we've been talking about the last two days. All right, so here's pretty much what I heard in number seven from the majority of you. Most of you started with angle A, saying angle A is 50, the measure of angle A is 50 degrees because of vertical angles, and that's fine. You could have also started with angle B instead because the 50 degree angle and angle B form a linear pair, so they have to add up to 180. It doesn't matter, and then you could just work your way around. So you can use all types of angles. Those are vertical angles. Therefore, the measure of angle A is 50, and then angle B and the 50 degree angle form a linear pair or are supplementary, so they have to add up to 180, so that makes angle, the measure of angle B 130 degrees. And then because B and C are vertical, uh, angle C would obviously also have to be 130 degrees. All right, take a look at number eight. 
Go ahead and try number eight. Find all the missing angles. Charlene, where would you like to start? Okay, and that one was easy, right? Because of the little square there in the corner. But I'll go ahead and do that. So the measure of angle A is equal to 90 degrees, once again, because of that. And then, Brooke, where did you go from there? The measure of angle C is 129 degrees. And how do you know that? Okay, good. And it's because of the fact that we have a linear pair right there, right? And then that leaves us with one angle, Drew, and that's angle B. What is the measure of angle B? The measure of angle B is 30 degrees. How do you know that? Uh, because 90 plus 58 equals 138. Uh, yeah, and that, that's okay. I'm, I'm actually glad that somebody brought that up. Most of you are going, huh? Because you... Because what you did is you saw that angle B and 58 were complementary, and you dealt with it in terms of 90. But what he is saying is absolutely 100% true. This angle plus this angle plus this angle, they're all on that same straight line, so therefore they have to add up to 180. So that's what he did. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, angle B is still 32 degrees. Okay? All right, before we actually get into the slightly more complicated pictures than either number seven or number eight as I'm clicking through this one. And there's not only one order to go in here. Um, here's what I would like you to do. Somewhere in your notes, probably in the lower right-hand corner, create as large of a triangle as you can. Use the edge of your protractor to create it. And then I want you to measure each of the three angles in the triangle. And then after that, follow the directions that are up here and in your notes. And I'll get back to you in another, I don't know, maybe two minutes. So remember what you're doing here. You're drawing a triangle, and then you're measuring all three angles, each of them. And then you're going to find the sum of those three angles. You're going to compare what you have with the people around you. And then we're trying to come to some sort of conclusion. Now, I've sort of hinted at this idea yesterday when we took a look at the more complicated picture. But this will show you that what I said yesterday or what I may have said yesterday is really true. So as we've compared, the conclusion that we come to, of course, is the fact that all three angles add up to uh, 180 degrees. And um, so this is called the triangle sum theorem. And the triangle sum theorem states that every triangle has angles whose sum equals 180 degrees. So in other words, if we know two of the angles in any triangle, we can easily find the third one by adding the two together and then taking that away from 180 using the triangle sum theorem. Now, before you go on to trying other problems, let me show you an elementary informal proof of why it's 180. Okay? We already know about the idea that a straight angle is 180 degrees. So if I take this triangle that I just had in the previous problem, and I take angle B, and I sort of rotate it around and put it right next to angle A, that's what I have so far. And now if I do the same thing with the angle C, so I'm taking all of angle A and B and C and putting them right next to each other. So if I take angle C and put it next to angle B, you can see right there that I have a straight angle composed of angle C, angle B, angle A. Since the straight angle is 180, that's an, uh, kind of an informal proof that all three of those angles will always add up to 180 degrees. Okay? All right, number nine. Now we're adding this new piece to the picture. Find the missing angles in number nine. Okay, so why did you start with angle X? Uh, because there was already 120 degrees and 16. Yeah. If you added them um, and subtracted it, it would be 180. Why? Okay, yeah, and I'm going to continue to ask questions why, 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 until we say those magic words. In this case, it's a, it's a linear pair, right, because they're on a line. So what did you say that angle was again? 
Okay, so I'm just going to write 43 right here. We should be writing the measure of angle. Actually, it's not 43, is it? It's 59. There we go. Right? It should be 59. Okay. Now we need to find angle Y. And it should be obvious to you how we find angle Y, right? We have a triangle within this picture right here. Right. Couple more minutes. So number 10, lots of places to start. Uh, you could start, if you wanted to, within the triangle right here. Use the triangle sum theorem to uh, find angle x. How many of you started there? Okay. So if you didn't start there, then I suppose you could start right here. We've got this linear pair right here, angle z and angle 59. Or you could have recognized the fact that you have an, a different linear pair right there, angle W and the 72 degree angle. It doesn't matter where you start. You had three choices there. Uh, let's see here. Where do I want to start? I will start with angle X just because I want to. Uh, 59 and 72 is 131 degrees. And I didn't mean to do that. So we have 131 degrees from 180 degrees. And that means we have a 49 degree angle right here. So angle X, the measure of angle X is 49 degrees. I will rewrite that in a minute. Uh, then I'll go with angle Y. Angle Y and angle X uh, form a linear pair. So therefore, angle Y is 131 degrees. Angle W is the one I will do next. Angle W and the 72 degree angle form a linear pair. So angle W is 108 degrees. And then angle Z and angle 59 are a linear pair, a different linear pair. And so that would make that 121 degrees. So writing this the correct way, the measure of angle X is 49 degrees. Didn't mean to write 490. The measure of angle Y is 131 degrees. The measure of angle W is 108 degrees, and then the measure of angle Z is 121 degrees. Any questions with number 10? So similar ideas in number 11, except we can't use the triangle sum theorem yet because we don't have any of the angles yet. So we're going to have to use the idea of uh, linear pairs here. So angle 1 is, of course, 88 degrees because angle 1 and uh, the 92 degree angle form a linear pair. So the measure of angle 1 is 88 degrees. Angle 2 is also based on a different linear pair. Angle 2 and 123 form a linear pair. So therefore, it is 57 degrees. The measure of angle 3, now we can use the triangle sum theorem because we have two of the three angles. 88 and 57 is uh, 145, so that makes angle 3 35 degrees. And then we have the measure of angle 4, which we can finally find now. We have a linear pair between angle 4 and the 35 degree angle, 
So that makes this 145 degrees. So the measure of angle 4 is 145 degrees. Any questions on number 11? All right. We are finished.